10 years before Lee Wen Hook, uh, Robert Hook in, in England had, uh, had, had drawn in his, in his book, um, Micrographia, he had drawn cells in cork and he'd named cells, but he hadn't really seen any living cells. He hadn't really looked for living cells. And Lee Wen Hook in that 1677 paper described the first cells growing and living in rainwater mm -hmm. uh, and in all kinds of other conditions as well. So he was the first person to see um, microbes. His paper is almost as old as the journal. I mean, that's quite incredible all those years ago to be It's extraordinarily, him. it's extraordinarily old really. And his, his insights are strikingly modern. Mm -hmm. There was a gap after Lee Wen Hook of really 150 to 200 years during which microscopy hardly advanced at all, if at all. In fact, it went backwards for a long time. So his observations, really, at the very beginnings of, of um, science as we know it, mm -hmm. with the, the first journal, um, Phil Trans, being published just less than 10 years before that. And, and science itself, the methodology was being developed at the time. So this was very much where people were trying to work out how should you do science, and, and, and he was a big, a big stimulus to all of that because he came up with something which was really radical and new, mm. which nobody had even imagined before. The idea that you could look at water, you know, rainwater, under a microscope and see teeming cells, tens of millions of cells down there, it was incomprehensible. And a lot of people doubted that. Mm. And the Royal Society pioneered methods, really, of, of trying to verify uh, whether what he saw was true or not. And so Robert Hooke, um, who had built his own microscopes 10 years earlier, went back to it and eventually succeeded in replicating it. So from that moment on, Lee Wen Hook was believed again. But before that, for a year or so, mm -hmm. there was consternation about whether he was seeing things or imagining things or quite what was going on. Was this really a revelatory new layer of nature that nobody had imagined or, or, or was it a figment of his imagination? How is this paper relevant now in, in today's field of microbiology, is it still relevant? I think, um, I think his spirit is relevant. Um, his paper, you know, this is 350 years ago, yeah. almost. It's 350 years since Phil Trans, this is 340 years uh, since, since that paper. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of what he reported there, um, he never actually gave away his own methods. He did send 13 of his own microscopes to the Royal Society when he died, but before that he'd never shown anybody his own best microscopes. Mm. He would demonstrate to people, but using, using a lower uh, resolution microscope. So we don't really know quite what he saw and so what he, he didn't see. He kept quite a bit secret. He though. kept a lot to himself, yes. I mean, Hooke was far more open. Hooke published all his methods in, in a lot of detail. Uh, and Lee Wen Hooke never talked about his methods. Um, and what that meant was that later on, uh, people didn't really believe that he could have seen what he had seen. Certainly, you know, he saw bacteria almost certainly. He had a resolution with his microscopes that seems to have gone down to one micrometer or less. Did you find it a challenge the way it was written? How does it compare to papers that <coughs> we publish today? Well, it's very chatty in its style. It's almost diaristic. Um, and, and that was very deliberate, in fact. It's quite unlike most of his papers. He, he tended to be a little bit more modern in his style, but this was written to persuade the Royal Society that what he saw was really true. Mm -hmm. um, and so he gave a lot of what we might see now as superfluous details uh, about the exact conditions and, and what he did over what periods of time. He's very precise in what he said. It's just that he recorded details that we now think, why is he saying that? But why would he not? He didn't know if it was important or not. So he recorded everything that might be important. What would you say has been the most interesting thing that you've learned throughout this process? I think something of that spirit of discovery and of the unknown that, that Lee Wen Hook really had par excellence, um, I, I think we need to rediscover something of that. That's his message to me, at least. Uh, what was it that made you, uh, or persuaded you to contribute to the, the special issue? So I was invited to write it on really on the basis of my knowledge of cell biology rather than my knowledge of Lee Wen-Hook. Um, and I was offered the chance to try to explain what Lee Wen-Hook's um, findings mean to us today. So it was only, uh, the reason I agreed to write it is because it allowed me to think, well, what does he mean for us today? What does he mean for me today? Mm -hmm. uh, and I've certainly learned a lot in, in writing that.